Party people in the place to be. What's going on? It's me. It's me. We are continuing with the what kind of month has it been edition of said party people. I never meant to leave you. I never meant to make you wait. So tonight I'm cleaning out my Facebook. One more time. Thank you. And in this one, I wasn't going to do a video on it because I'd already commented on it on Facebook. Um, but with what's been going on in the news lately over in Baltimore and with just the, just the sheer all fucking dacity of this news story, I have to do it. This one, the uh, website this comes from is the freethoughtproject.com. Cop ruptures man spleen. Fellow cops laugh, take pics as he lays dying, begging for help. Out of, who would have guessed it, Florida. Orlando, Florida. An Orlando cop, Dateline Orlando, Florida. An Orlando cop has been arrested after surveillance video showed him violently kneeing a handcuffed man. But further investigation into the matter shows that his fellow officers were not only complicit in covering it up, but also sadistically laughed as the man lay bleeding internally in the cell. Orlando police officer Pito DeLeo was arrested in March and charged with felony battery after surveillance video showed him kneeing a handcuff Robert Lies in the gut. Several hours later, Lies underwent emergency surgery to remove his spleen. Underwent emergency surgery to remove his spleen. What happened between underwent emergency surgery to remove his spleen? What happened between the initial blow to the stomach and the time the paramedics were notified is disturbing to say the least. Robert Lee yes, was in jail was in jail after he says a friend left him with a sixty dollar bar tab and he was unable to pay. Besides being drunk, not once did Lee yes, ever pose a threat to officers. In fact, he peacefully offered De Delio his hands to be brought to jail after knowing that he was not able that he was not going to be able to pay. But Lies says that De Leo didn't care. That he was nice and then kicked the handcuffed man in the stomach as he was loading him into the squad car. Once in jail, Lies headbutted the door because he was upset and injured. And he was trying to get the attention of someone besides the officers who were outside the door ridiculing him. Officer Delio, who apparently wanted to take out more frustrations on the restrained man. Why couldn't he just have a YouTube channel like I do? Then walked into the cell and kneed him in the stomach so hard that it ruptured his spleen. Need him in the stomach so hard that it ruptured his spleen. The pain was so great that Lies was immobilized. Delio picks the man up like a rag doll and laughably yells, yells to Lies, stop resisting. He could barely breathe. He fell to the floor in agony. He was then picked up and dragged out of the cell to be placed in leg restraints. During the two-hour-long video, after Lies was struck by the officer, he begged for help. Sergeant Michael Faulkner reported to Internal Affairs that Lies not only didn't ask for medical attention, but that he refused it. Unlike Sergeant Faulkner, however, the video does not lie. Not five, not ten, but at least twenty times Lies can be heard on video begging for medical attention. I need medical attention, please, Lies said. What do you need medical attention for, Faulkner asked. I have to lay down, please. I want to lay down, Lies said. My chest. What's wrong, Faulkner asked Lies. I can't breathe right, Lies said. But the sadistic Faulkner, that's a bit of editorializing, the sadistic Faulkner did not render aid, nor did he call paramedics. Instead, he took cell phone pics of the injured man. According to WFTV, Faulkner told Internal Affairs investigators that he was investigating Delio's use of force. But the video shows Lee S. is the one who brought it up and Faulkner never asked about it. I got kicked in the chest in the back seat of the car, Lee S. said. Crucial minutes passed. That's not how you say uh, wrong past. That could have uh, led to the death of Lee S. During this time, the officers can be heard on the surveillance video laughing and joking about the man who lay dying just a few feet away. Somebody please call the paramedics, Lies said, suffering as the laughter continued. Finally, after nearly two hours, paramedics arrived and Lies's life was saved. Once again, heroes are exposed for villains. Way editorializing. Thanks to the power of the camera lens, luckily no lives were lost due to these criminal actions. Well, there's a video, folks, and that video starts right 
Now. Hunter investigates new questions about an OPD investigation into excessive force complaints. A suspect's spleen had to be removed after he claims officer Peter Delio here need him. Well, so you can see the knee right fucking there. Later arrested. But Channel 9's Kathy Belch dug through the internal investigation and uncovered some serious discrepancies about the actions of Delio's supervisor. Kathy? Officer Delio's supervisor's statement to OPD Internal Affairs appeared to have some inconsistencies, so we went back and watched the two-hour video in the holding cell. It contradicts what Sergeant Michael Faulkner said he did concerning getting medical treatment for lease. Robert Lease, who was arrested for skipping out on a $60 bar bill, asked for medical attention at least 20 times as he writhed on the floor with his hands and feet bound, gasping and moaning, after suffering this blow to the gut from Officer Peter Delio. Can I please have some medical attention? Please? Please, I'm begging. Delio's supervisor, Sergeant Michael Faulkner, told OPD Internal Affairs Lease refused medical <clears throat> treatment before he got there and when Faulkner talked to Lease himself, saying, quote, I also inquired about that. He uh, once again refused um, that treatment. But the cell video shows not only did Faulkner never ask Lease if he wanted medical attention, he ignored Lease's pleas for it. I have med medical attention. What do you need medical attention for? Sergeant Faulkner did not call paramedics. Instead, he took cell phone photos of Lease. He told Internal Affairs he was investigating Delio's use of force, this knee strike. But the video shows Lease is the one who brought it up, and Faulkner never asked about it. I got kicked in the chest in the back seat of the car. 16 minutes go by. You can hear the officers talking and laughing outside the cell while Lease keeps asking for help. Even after that, the laughing continues. To be fair, in the video, you can't tell what they're laughing at. Medics were on the way about an hour and a half after he asked Sergeant Faulkner to call them. Lisa's doctors say he was bleeding internally. We asked OPD today whether the sergeant was also the target of an internal investigation. A spokesman says he's looking into it. Live in the looking newsroom, into. Kathy Bellich, Channel 9, I would... Yo, um... You want to talk about the thin blue line, let's talk about another line. There is a very thin line between cops and fucking criminals. Cops, criminals, soldiers, a lot of them tend to come from the same type of fucking person. A lot of them have the same mentality, and really it's a matter of who picks them up first. <laughs> you know what I mean? If the gangs get to them first, they a lot of people go to those same people can go to a gang. If the fucking cops get to them first, if the military gets them first, it's the same fucking thing. Um, there are good cops. To be sure, there's not, you know, uh, I, I would say that a, a, a significant number of cops are good. Probably the majority of them are good and just doing their job. And then there are fucking cowboys like this. Fucking cowboys. That's what the fuck they are. And this is a fucking cowboy. That is, that, that's what they are. What, dude couldn't pay a fucking bar tab. The fuck, get me? Got a knee in the fucking chest? Like, if anything... If any actual thing, you put him in cuffs for the fucking restaurant, right? And you sit him on the corner for an hour or whatever, or put him in the back of the car for a half hour or whatever, and you fucking let him, you don't even fucking process him. You shit me over a $60 bar to, hey, get the fuck out of here. Until uh, a significant amount of people turn the system on its head. Until a significant amount of people, you know, you can riot all you want to, but until a significant amount of people do the voting, until a significant amount of pe honest people get into positions of power, get into politics so they can get into positions of power, uh, and don't get corrupted, until a significant amount of people vote out the corrupt people and so a significant amount of people uh uh make their voices heard not i'm not talking about burning shit down but i mean make their voices heard in in competent ways shit like this 
is going to continue to happen. And it's fucking bullshit. So uh, make your fucking voices heard, party people. And tweeting isn't going to do it. Tweeting's going to get, you know, tweeting and, and, and writing ain't going to get the job done. Like, is, tweeting is going to get some, you know, might get some attention. Uh, but it ain't gonna get the job done. You need to hit the ballot box. What you need to do, you need to nominate somebody who actually is honest, or you need to get up off your ass and be the nominee who actually is honest. Real talk. That's that's what's got to happen. That's what's got to happen. Otherwise, these fucking cowboys are just gonna keep getting away with it. It's late great Robin Harris once said. Also, the goddamn law. Peace. What are you talking about? You got any guns in the car? I said, no, I was at home with the dude. <laughs> Officer, the goddamn law.